Yep. Ginger Runner. What is up, everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner, here for another GingerRunner.com review. Big review today. One of the most requested reviews from all of you viewers, especially in recent months. Finally, from Hoka11, the Hoka11 Clayton. Dun, 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 dun. Many of you have been curious what I would think about this shoe. You might remember some reviews from the past. I really loved the Hoka11 Clifton. I thought the Clifton 2 was a bit of a step back. Same with the Challenger ATR, one of my favorite trail shoes. Version 2, I also thought took a step back. So I was super excited to hear that Hoka11 this year was listening to a lot of people's feedback in relation to their new shoes. This is one of the first of their new shoes that I will be reviewing. I hope to get my hands on some of the other new versions coming out this year. But the Clayton is essentially a 4 millimeter drop, 28-24 stack height shoe, Pro 2 light, r matte midsole materials, a nice wide stable platform, and yes, additional width in the forefoot. Yes! Finally! Just enough to make us happy. The shoe was meant to go fast. It's responsive. It's cushioned. I'm going to consider it the adorable baby of the Clifton one and the Hoka 1-1 one one Huaka. It really is a combination of both of those shoes in a delightful fast cushioned package. I'm digging it, but let's get into more specifics in this review, starting with things that I like about the Hoka 11 Clayton Light. Just pulling this thing out of the box, I was really impressed with how light the shoe is. The combination of the real thin, simple upper, the lightweight midsole materials, combines to a shoe that's just over eight ounces. In my mind, it's super comparable to both the Huaka and the Clifton one. It doesn't feel too heavy at all. And they managed to shave a lot of weight by just reducing all the rubber outsole. It's exposed arm mat. Saves a ton of weight. Cushion it's more reminiscent of the Hoka 11 Huaka, which I reviewed long ago, than it is to the Clifton. It's not super soft like the Clifton, but it's more responsive like the Waka. It's a combination of those two. It gives you a super responsive yet cushioned and comfortable ride. They managed to find a really good balance. So for the days you want to pick up the speed, it tends to do very well. On the days you want to do a longer run, maybe more relaxed pace, it works well for that. And I believe with the Pro 2 light midsole material, they're actually giving you varying degrees of cushion and responsiveness throughout the midsole, depending on foot strike width. I should just make this my first like, because this is one of the things that I want wanted, you have wanted, a bit more width in the forefoot of this shoe, something that will allow our toes to get a little bit more movement, because sometimes those toes get locked under. It's been super frustrating. I'm happy to report that the Clayton gives you a bit more width up in the forefoot. Your toes can actually move. The upper is restrictive. It's not a super flexible upper. I'll get to that a little bit later, but your toes can finely breathe. And in addition to the width of the forefoot, I'm really digging the width of the outsole and midsole material. It gives you tons of support. The stability is awesome. For road running, you're really going to love that wide outsole material and even on light trails which obviously I've done a lot in this shoe that stability comes in huge yes I've worn this shoe on huge trail runs because the trails around here are super buffed out in some locations so I can go for really long distances in this shoe very comfortably managed to have just enough grip with the outsole I'm not sliding around and stuff like that so put some good trail miles in this shoe and it actually works better than expected. Very similar to the Waka. And finally, a fun little detail, the tongue and laces. Previous Hoka 1-1 models, I had a lot of problems with the laces and the tongue not working together. The tongue's too thick, it's too heavy. These laces, the eyelets, and the tongue lock down. Very nice, very secure. So yeah, all good stuff happening. So, I mean, I have a ton of likes. I think the shoe's generally solid. I've been running a ton of miles in it. But there are a couple of things that really bug me. Deal breakers, not necessarily, but I am so curious if you guys have had these problems as well. Let's start with things I dislike about the Hoka Clayton. The upper materials, primarily on the medial side of the forefoot. I haven't had blister issues in a lot of Hokas, at least not nearly as bad as I have in the Clayton. Just behind the forefoot on the medial side, this welded overlay section of the upper has caused some serious chafing, serious blister issues. It's not a sizing problem. I have plenty of room in the toe box. It's a density, rigidity, and lack of flexibility issue that causes chafing and problems. Started in the left foot, actually transferred to the right foot as well. So now both shoes have that problem, and I am not the only one. I've talked to multiple people who have had the exact same problem with this spot right there. I'm tempted to pull out a razor blade and just cut that thing out because everything else about the shoe is so great. Durability. I have nearly 100, if not more than 100 miles in the shoe already. So far, it's actually doing pretty well. I'm worried about the future of the shoe just being a little less durable than I would hope purely because there is no rubber on the outsole. The armat material, look at that. Surprisingly durable, holding up well. So it's more of a concern rather than a dislike. So far, so good. And finally, price. It's a $150 shoe. That's pretty pricey, especially for a lightweight racing style shoe or a Clifton replacement. Granted, there is a coupon in the description of this video that will get you 10% off a running warehouse, so I encourage you guys to use it because it works. It brings the price down on the shoe a lot. And at 150 bucks, that's pretty pricey for a shoe that hopefully you can get only maybe a couple hundred miles out of. But that's it for dislikes, yes. 
A lot more likes and dislikes. Really happy with the little baby of the Clifton and the Huaca. Let's get on to the points. Quality, I'm going to give it 4 out of 5. I think the material that they use in the upper is a bit of an issue. But otherwise, I think the quality of the shoe is holding up pretty damn well. Comfort, because of the blister, I'm going to knock him down a point. 4 out of 5. Otherwise, comfort's through the roof. Really like going long in this shoe. It is a comfy. Price. I'm gonna knock them down two points for a $150 price tag, but then add a point because there is a coupon that gets you 10% off. It puts it in a more reasonable ballpark. So four out of five on price. And finally, looks. I actually don't mind the looks. You know I like bright shoes, I like wild shoes. These are a little bit on that wild side, so I'll give them a four out of five on looks. Bringing our grand total to 16 out of 20, a solid score for the Hoka 11 Clayton, the first version of this shoe. I'm excited to try other shoes that are coming out this year from them, the Tracer. For example, hopefully they take this shoe and just add a few outsole lugs, because converting this into a trail shoe would be awesome, and a little bit more flexibility in the upper. Oh, maybe we have a huge winner there. So far, I'm liking what I see in the Clayton. Now, what I'm really curious about is what you guys think of this shoe. It's now out. It's available. Get your feet into it. Let me know what you guys think. If you go for long runs, if that works, or if you have the same issue that I have, let me know in the comments of this video what you think about the Hoka Woman Clayton. And that, my friends, is it for today's review. If you want to know more about this shoe or get that discount, the link is in the description to go to Running Warehouse. Check that out. Make sure you like, favorite, and subscribe to this channel, youtube.com slash thegingerrunner, posting new reviews, new videos every single week. The first to find out about those. And be sure to subscribe across all social networks over on Twitter. It's at thegingerrunner. Facebook, it's facebook.com slash thegingerrunner. On Instagram, it's at Ethan Newberry. And of course, gingerrunner.com. If you want to help keep the lights on and the mics hot, all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash thegingerrunner. And for as little as a buck a month, you can become a Patreon crew member. It's awesome. There's some perks on the back end. Of course, Ginger Runner Live every single Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time where I bring on guests and we chat live with them and you can interact with them right there on the fly. It's a lot of fun. That's it for the review. Hope you guys liked it. I know I did. Get out there. Train hard, race harder, and party the hardest. I know I am in these. See you guys next week. Bye.